I want to thank you all for your prayers and your encouragement and support. And I'm just so thankful. My wife, Judy, and I were so blessed to be a part of this fellowship. I just made the video about uh, the situation in Yemen. I have heard quite a few news reports, thank God, in the past few days about the situation in Yemen. It's been brought to the forefront, of course, because of the situation uh, with Saudi Arabia and the murder of the journalist. It's been brought to the attention of uh, the American people how the United States government is allied with Saudi Arabia, uh, a wicked terrorist regime uh, that is carrying out an atrocious war in Yemen. Uh, uh, Iran is, of course, just as evil. They're on the other side of the war. And uh, Iran and Saudi Arabia are fighting it out. Uh, the Sunnis versus the, the uh, Shiites. For those of you that didn't just watch my last video, I'm going to put the link up here right now. And I urge you, please watch that video about the situation in Yemen and the starving people, the starving children. And uh, I hope that you'll watch that video. Uh, you know, the Bible says... Uh, if we have all knowledge and we can understand all mysteries uh, and and yet we have not love, then it's meaningless. Everything is meaningless without love. Without the love of God, nothing matters. I get so many comments from the people, as I've mentioned before, from people that are, are just all about knowledge, uh, but they talk uh, hate and they're full of uh, hate and they're, they're talking like they're interested in Bible subjects and yet they're full of hate. And uh, it's like they, they want to know all about the Bible or they say they do anyway. They want to argue about the Bible and they want to debate the Bible, but they're not, uh, there's no love. They don't talk in love. They, they're not civil. They're unkind. They're, they're unloving. And uh, that's not, uh, that's not of God. Uh, if you if you have everything, <laughs> Bible knowledge, and uh, can debate the Bible, and yet you don't have love, you don't know God, and you're you're only uh, you're deceiving yourself. The Bible says, examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. The Bible says that uh, the world will know that we're Christians by our love. If you don't have the love of God, if you can't talk to your brothers and sisters in love, if you can't disagree with your brother and sister in love, if you can't speak and uh, have love in your heart, then you don't know the Lord. And so, so those of you that are sending me these hateful comments, uh, I know that you're not of God and you don't know the Lord. Uh, we, on this channel, what we're saying is that God is love. And uh, we're, re we're talking about the things that are coming in these last days because it's important to warn the body of Christ about the things that are happening in these last days. We talk about what the Bible says about these last days. And we're trying to point these things out uh, for a reason because uh, God wants us to be uh, understanding the words of God, and he wants us to be looking toward his second coming. He wants us to be expecting and watching and waiting for him. He wants us to be aware of things that he has warned us about in the book of Revelation and in many other uh, prophecies in the Bible. God is telling us to... Uh, be awake and be aware and uh, put on love. That's, that's the number one thing. The Bible says that the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the first fruit is love. And so I just urge you, uh, let's have love and compassion for a lost world. We want to win them to Christ. We don't want to support these wars that are killing them. We want to we want to pray for them. We want to win them to Christ. We want to help them. And so I hope you'll watch that video about the situation in Yemen. It's very important that every Christian today would be aware of the worst humanitarian disaster in the world today is in Yemen. Millions of people starving to death. And if you're a Christian and you don't care about that situation, then uh, 
something's wrong inside and you need to put on the love of God. What I want to look at in this video is about the, the earthquakes, which is also a, a great uh, disaster uh, for many areas of the world. Right now, just recently, there was an earthquake uh, on the very border between Iran and Iraq. There was an earthquake that affected many, many people. Uh, this year, there has been a massive earthquake in Indonesia that killed over 2,000 people. You know, that's about three times as many people as was killed in the worst earthquake in 2017. These earthquakes are coming in these last days. Jesus told us so. In our last video that I made about uh, uh, Yemen, we were talking about famine and how Jesus had foretold famine. This is the verse that we're looking at in our Bible study in, in the Gospel of Mark chapter 13 verse 8 for nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places and there shall be famines and troubles these are the beginnings of sorrows jesus talked up to his disciples about things that are coming in these end times and what he said was it's going to be a time of of horrible disasters in the world there's going to be wars, there's going to be famines, there's going to be earthquakes. In the last video I talked about famine and so in this video I want to talk here about the earthquakes. Over three years ago I made a video dealing with earthquakes, dealing with how God uses earthquakes to draw attention to momentous events in history, talking about how God speaks through the earthquakes. So what I'd like to do right now is show you a clip from that video about earthquakes and uh, how uh, God speaks powerfully through the earthquake. Let's go to the Bible and see what God's Word has to say about these powerful earthquakes. Of course, a politically correct secular world says that earthquakes will just happen as determined by time and geological forces. But wiser generations in the past called them acts of God. And the Bible makes it clear that they are very special acts of God. The three central events in human history are all marked by earthquakes. The atoning death of Jesus on the cross the resurrection of Jesus from the tomb, and the second coming of King Jesus as he returns to earth. Obviously, God speaks powerfully in the earthquake. He is connecting with a lost world that needs his salvation, a world that needs Jesus. With Jesus' death and resurrection and second coming, God shakes the earth and says to a lost world, Behold, this is my son. Yes, the word of God is clear that it is God who shakes the earth. God shook the earth when he spoke at Mount Sinai. He shook the earth as he fought Israel's battles. He shook the earth in rescuing Paul and Silas from prison. And in the earthquake, God testifies to the world, listen to my message. Prophecies of the Bible tell us God will send a great earthquake in the latter days when nations gather against Israel. He will shake the earth when his two witnesses are taken up into heaven. Earthquakes are instruments of God to shake up the hearts of lost souls. The Bible says that in the last days the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. Jesus tells us to expect these many earthquakes as the end of all things nears, and as all the Bible prophecies come to be fulfilled. And at the very end, as the nations gather at Armageddon, an earthquake will strike like no other before it, a great earthquake such as was not known since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake. As of this time in history, the most powerful earthquake known to modern man was a magnitude 9.5, a subduction zone earthquake off the coast of South America in 1960. This map gives an idea of the massive tsunami that quake sent across the Pacific Ocean. To understand the power of this disaster that left 2 million people homeless in Chile, 
Look at how far away Hawaii is from the epicenter, over 6,000 miles, and yet the city of Hilo, Hawaii was decimated by the tsunami. Waves so powerful that they bent parking meters in the streets. Second to this, the next most formidable earthquake known to seismologists was the Alaska quake of 1964, a magnitude 9.4, a subduction zone earthquake that created a tsunami with waves recorded as high as 220 feet, the height of a 20-story building. And third was the 2004 Indian Ocean quake we've already mentioned, another subduction zone quake, magnitude 9.3, with its tsunami that killed 230,000 people. And the fourth most powerful earthquake known to man, the 2011 Japan quake, yet another subduction zone earthquake, a magnitude 9.0, with a tsunami that traveled six miles inland and moved the main island of Japan eight feet and shifted the entire earth on its axis by several inches. When Jesus' disciples asked him about the end of time and the fulfillment of all things, included in his response, Jesus had said to his disciples, there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. One of the signs of the end times, the sea and the waves roaring, the prophet Isaiah wrote, the Lord spoke to me, saying, These people refused the waters of Shiloh that go softly. The people of Israel had rejected the peaceful waters at home. In other words, they had rejected the Lord God. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord brings upon them the waters of the river. The Lord uses the example of rushing water, a violent flood, to describe the consequences of rejecting His peace, His kingdom. The world today in these end times has rejected the living water, the Lord Jesus Christ, the peaceful water. And the world chooses instead the spirit of Antichrist, falling away from God's word, choosing instead to join with the nations that rage against the Lord and his anointed one. Woe to the multitude of many people making noise like the noise of the seas and to the rushing of nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. The nations that rage against God are compared to the raging ocean waters and to the raging waves that rise and fall. The nations shall rush like the rushing of many waters, but God shall rebuke them. God rebuked those that opposed him when he rescued his children from slavery and sent the crashing waves of the Red Sea down upon a nation that fought against him. The devastating tsunamis of recent years have been caused by the world's most powerful earthquakes which occur in the Ring of Fire, the ring that runs from New Zealand up the east coast of Asia across to Alaska and down the west coast of the North and South American continents. The ring of fire geologists have discovered is really a ring of subduction zones where tectonic plates get stuck and then abruptly get unstuck. Seismologists consider the Cascadia subduction zone to be the North American continent's most dangerous fault line. The Seattle Emergency Management Office estimates Thousands upon thousands of landslides throughout the Pacific Northwest will be set off by the Cascadia earthquake. FEMA is projecting thousands of people will perish in a coming Cascadia earthquake and tsunami. They project a million homeless without shelter and millions more in need of food and water. There is only one way to be saved from the rushing waters of a tsunami. You won't outrun the waves as they come crashing in. The one way to be saved is to be on higher ground.
God's holy word says that disaster is coming on a world that is in rebellion against God. You cannot run away from reality and you cannot run away from the coming wrath of God. God is holding back his judgment on a sin-filled world to give whosoever will the opportunity to get on higher ground. Now, the word of God says that Jesus delivers us from the wrath to come. Jesus is the only higher ground that can save you from the coming wrath of God. You can be sure that you will enter into the kingdom of heaven when you leave this world. You can be absolutely sure of that if you will bow down your heart to God, give your heart to Jesus Christ, and trust in Him. Turn from sin. Say to sin, I don't want to live for you anymore. I want to live for God. I want to live for Jesus Christ. You do that today, and God promises you heaven will be your home forever and ever. God promises you that. Will you do that today? Will you make that decision right now? Will you say to God, oh Lord, I love you, and I don't love this world. I love you, and I don't love sin. I believe your word. I believe the Bible. I believe in Jesus Christ who came into the world for my sins. I believe that he died on the cross for my sins. And I give my heart to you now, Lord. I pray to you now, please forgive my sins. Write my name into your book of life. I want to be yours now and forever. In Jesus' name, I pray that prayer. If you have prayed that prayer from your heart sincerely, God promises you that all who come to him, he will never cast out.